Hello, and welcome to United We Thrive, a program of the United Way of Westchester and Putnam. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the United Way and what we do in Westchester and Putnam. United Way helps local residents to become self-sufficient and thrive in a stronger community. We do that in many ways. We help local residents to get job training, financial skills. We get to the roots of poverty by focusing on education and giving children the educational tools to be successful, successful, which is a great precursor of their future lives. We help local residents who are in crisis. We do that with our 211 helpline, where people can call with any health and human service question, any time of the day or night, 365 days a year. They can ask questions, get referrals, and find out where the resources are to be able to help them. We also help the not-for-profit community, and we do that through our Gifts and Kind program, which this year alone has given out $3 million in goods and services to the, to the not-for-profits in Westchester and Putnam. We also help them by doing low-cost professional development and training so we have many ways that the United Way is helping the community. And we urge you to give, advocate, and volunteer with us. We also have on our website different opportunities for you at uwwp.org, or you may call 914-997-6700 for more information. One of the most recent things that we have done has been a statewide study on something called ALICE, which is a way of putting a picture, a face, on residents in our community who are struggling. People who are working one, two, three jobs and still having trouble making ends meet. They may be one flat tire or one toothache from not putting food in the table or not paying their mortgage or their taxes. These people are asset limited income constrained employed and that's what ALICE stands for. You may be surprised to learn that in Westchester County 34 percent of the households are considered to be ALICE and in Putnam County 33 percent of the households. It's nothing to be ashamed of to be ALICE. It's a reality of where and how we live. Today we're going to take a look at one of the issues that is causing Alice to struggle. And that issue is housing. The Alice study took a look and developed a housing indicator that is comprised of the affordability of the housing, the access to housing, and real estate taxes. And that's what we'll be speaking about today. I'm very excited to be able to introduce our guests today. Rose, Marie, Rose Noonan from the Housing Action Council Connie Fagan, who is the Executive Director of the Putnam County Housing Corporation, and Michael Goldrich, who is the Senior Vice President and Chief Lending Officer of, Putnam, of PCSB Bank, formerly Putnam County Savings Bank. <laughs> We're very happy to have all of you here today for, I think, what, what will be a very lively conversation and very informative to our listeners. So thank you very much for being here. We're pleased to be here. Yes. Welcome. So I think the first question is, I think there's a little bit of confusion out there between affordable housing and affordability of housing. Can you really explain what that means? Are they the same thing? Are they different? Well, I'll take a, a crack at that. Um, in terms of our organization, Housing Action Council, affordable means affordable to those who can't afford housing in the private market. But when you're looking at it from a more statistical point of view, it's are people paying more than 30% of their household income toward rent or toward uh, the mortgage, principal and interest, real estate taxes, and, and so forth. And a tremendous percentage, both in Westchester County and in Putnam County, are paying more than 30% of their income toward housing costs. In Westchester, it's it's it sees 50% of our, our household population now. 
Um, and in many cases, it's not 30 percent, more than 30 percent, it's more than 50 percent of their income toward housing because they're, because the both housing <coughs> prices, sale of prices, and rents are, are so high, and there's a huge demand. In Westchester County, we're talking the median income for a s median price of a single family home exceeds 600000 Now, there are many homes that are less than that, and there's more homes more than that. But when you're just thinking about it, the median price of a single family home is 600000 The Alice workers that you're referring to can't afford those homes. They can't, um, and there's such a demand. Um, again, I'm speaking primarily to Westchester. Uh, we have the forces of New York City where where people are coming into Westchester because of the high rents and the high prices in the in the city and the lifestyle that we have in Westchester. But at, at the same time, the number of households are, inc are increasing in Westchester, creating a greater demand. And then the fact that there's been such a foreclosure crisis over the years is also causing people to rent, which is forcing the rents up in, in the Westchester market. What about in Putnam County? In Putnam, it's actually staggering. We had Patterns for Progress, their Housing Solutions Division, uh, prepare a housing study for us. And we found that 88%, whether you're a renter or a homeowner, are paying more than 30% of their income towards housing. That's, that is absolutely it's, astounding. Yes. 88% are 88%. spending more than 30%. Percent. Michael, from, from a banking standpoint, why is that 30% so important? That is the, um, <clears throat> the, the regulatory requirements, so the, the regulation, and I agree with, with Rose and Connie with the fact that it's an affordability issue. So at that $600,000 price tag for the medium price, it's, that's expensive. And the, the ratios that the banks commonly look at for acceptability for a loan approval candidate candidate are 28 percent for housing expense and 36 percent for all expenses. So we round that 28 percent. We could go up 30 percent in that. We can go a little bit higher on the back end. But that criteria is, is the measurement for an acceptable um, uh, credit applicant. Further compounding the regulatory issues are Dodd-Frank to where the banks and the banking system is a little bit handcuffed in order to make exceptions to that, to those ratios and those policies. Because if you make one exception, you have to make an exception to all. So based on Dodd-Frank, it's a, it's, a, it's a big limitation. The other factors that we're seeing too, and the other primary factors are loan to value ratios and credit scores. So the combination of the income ratios, the loan to values, and the credit scores um, are the are the huge criteria that's impacting not only the affordable segment, but even the larger and the higher segment to get them to qualify for, for mortgages. And this problem seems to be one whether you're looking at home ownership or whether you're looking at rentals. Right, and in Putnam County, we have one of the highest um, home ownership rates in the nation. It's at 82 percent. So we don't have a lot of available ha rental housing for young people. Um, which is which is a problem because whether it be a teacher or a fireman or a police officer just starting, they're having difficulty locating you know uh, units to live in. You know, I think when we did the Ellis study, one of the things that we found was that for a family of four with two children in childcare, not necessarily high quality childcare, regulated childcare. Uh, that for a family of four with those two children, it would take about $78,000 a year just to be able to live at that Alice threshold where you're on the edge. Um, so I think we're looking at a very broad group of people who are struggling in this area. And if you take a look at other parts of the state or the country, to live at that same Alice threshold in the rest of New York State would be about 62000 and in Idaho it would be 42000 so what's happening is that people are not, um, they're not able to uh, meet the costs of things and they're not qualifying for a lot of the supports because those are national or state supports. So they're not qualifying. So um, I think the 30% is a, a really interesting number that I think most of our viewers probably do not realize 
that that's what the threshold is. What about in terms of availability of housing? What do we see out there in terms of availability of housing that is affordable to the residents? Well, as I said, in Putnam County, whether you own or rent, it, it's 88% of us, it's unaffordable using that 30%. Uh, so the availability of housing, it, it, there, there isn't a lot of affordable rental housing or home ownership. Our, our average um, house cost is in like 360 something thousand. So in Putnam County, if you're on minimum wage, um, you can only afford uh, a, a rent of $540. There, there's nothing available for $540. You know, I was having a discussion with Mike Piazza, who's our Commissioner of Social Services and, um, and Mental Health, and he was concerned, um, you know, again, in Putnam, that if you did minimum wage at nine seventy an hour in that one-bedroom apartment of 1419 you'd have to work 99 hours right. a week to be able to meet right. that. And I think that's what a lot of our Ellis population is doing. They're working one, two, and three jobs to be able to meet it. But he was talking about the fact that um, Section 8 housing, mm -hmm. which is subsidized, there is really not very much of it in Putnam County at all. Well, we originally had 540 vouchers. And then um, they raised us up to 565. And then because of all the economic uncertainty, we're down to 516 vouchers to serve the county. When we opened our waiting list in uh, February of this year, we had 880 applicants. Wow. So, uh, you know, someone that's on that waiting list, it's in excess of three years before we would probably call them. So what are these people doing over a three-year period of time? If they, they don't have the funds to be able to get even rental housing, and they are um, not qualifying for other types of housing or don't have the funds, what do they do in that time? Do you have any idea? I think a lot of them wind up staying with friends or relatives or you know, couch surfing, going from one friend to another. Um, you know, it's really disheartening to have a phone call and not be, and not be able to say, I can help you. And we do that more and more now because we only provide Section 8 housing, which is permanent housing. Now, if, if you think about it, you see Alice every day, many multiple times a day. Alice is working all over the community. You know, they're working, whether you go into the nail salon or you go into the supermarket or you go into a not-for-profit, you go into probably the tel some of the tellers in the bank are probably even uh, qualifying as as Alice descriptors. Uh, they're everywhere um, and they're people that we know, they're people we care about. And I think, um, Rose, you've been doing some interesting things just on the border of Putnam in Westchester down around uh, Somers mm -hmm. on 6. Could you talk a little bit about that project? Uh, well, the, well, there's a number of, number of developments in in Somers that, that we have been involved with over the past few years. Um, one of them being referred to as the Muse, which is the uh, senior housing, um, which is currently has a very lengthy waiting list. But the, the more recent one is the, the Avalon in, in Somers, which is a market rate development. And uh, because of the requirements of the town, a percentage of the uh, apartments are uh, were designed to be affordable um, within the market rate development. So the affordable units are integrated throughout the development. Uh, they're one and, one and two bedrooms, and but there's only 10. There's only 10 out of a, a development of about 150 apartments. Uh, so those have been, been marketed. Uh, we received about 350 applications for 10, 10 apartments. Um, we had the lottery la last week. Uh, and now, now the individuals and families who applied, and they applied from the town, they applied from outside the town, uh, people from, from um, Putnam County also applied, and we, we go through them by their lottery number uh, to see if they qualify, to see if they can afford the affordable rents. There are many people that can't afford the affordable rents unless they have the housing vouchers to assist them. They will look at credit also, and then those that can meet those criteria then are able to, able to rent. 
my, 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 my guess is, is that we'll have about 300 <coughs> on the waiting list after the, the 10 that um, are qualified are moving, moving in. So we're creating more, 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 more waiting, more waiting lists. But in Westchester, you're seeing, because of the development that we're having, maybe un unlike Putnam, um, particularly in the, the urban areas, the White Plains, the New Rochelles, the Yonkers, most of the communities are now requiring a percentage of the units in the market rate developments to be affordable. But unless you have development going on, you're not creating creating new new units. So you have to be in a in a an economy where the, the market forces are working in, in favor of the for profit sector in order to create some of the affordable units. So how do foreclosures and evictions uh, how do they, they work in this? How, how are they affecting it? Or are they? I, I, and from a banking standpoint, I could probably answer that one where they're probably, that's just um, uh, upsetting the housing marketing, pushing more to rental than home, home ownership. Mm -hmm. um, and, and right now is, you know, the, the interest rates are at historic lows, so, or close or near historic lows. So the affordability component of someone being able to buy and own a home they, they should be able to take advantage of the low interest rates. And for example, right now, um, a 30-year mortgage is about 4%. And a 4% 30-year mortgage, $200,000, your monthly payment is about $1,000. Add on top of that, you probably have taxes of 500, maybe even more, and that gets you to that $1,500, $1,400, $1,500 monthly housing expense that we mentioned before. The ratio on that, the 30% ratio of a $1,500 housing expense is about $5,000 a month or $60,000 a year. If you're making minimum wage or something higher than that, you're not making $60,000 a year. So that is part of the problem for the accessibility to either home ownership or being able to afford an average rent of $1,400, dollars $1,500. You know, it, it's interesting because you mentioned the taxes, and I think a lot of times people think of taxes in terms of home ownership, and they don't think about the effect on on rentals. Uh, and uh, you know, it does have an effect. And maybe would you like to speak to that just a little bit? Well, um, as Rose was saying, in Putnam, we don't do quite as much new construction because we do not have the infrastructure. We don't have the water and sewer that would allow us the density so that we could build more affordable units. But um, it, it's, it's difficult for with taxes um, for renters because through the Section 8 program, uh, a landlord is receiving increases in his property taxes and he needs to pass them on. So even for the Section 8 rents, they usually go up every year to accommodate, you know, the tax increases th that keep coming. But um, a lot of young people will come in and they'll be interested in our home ownership program. And um, after taking the course, they wind up understanding that they may be able to afford the mortgage payment, but oftentimes the taxes are equal or exceed exceed so that they really are in no, you know, they cannot own a home at this point in their lives. It's kind of a, a scary thought that the taxes are what keep people from owning a home or from being able to have a, a rental that's affordable. You know, I think a lot of people think that the landlords are, you know, rolling in money because they have rentals that they can do and that's, you know, paying for the trips abroad or to <laughs> Bali or to the Caribbean, not today. But they, um, you know, I think they don't realize that the, the cost of living in the area because of the real estate co uh, taxes and school taxes um, yeah. are such that are affecting both rentals and, and home ownership. Yeah, it is. It's definitely the taxes for the homeowners and the end users. Um, but even for the developers that are trying to produce an affordable type project, the, um, the, the, the time and the cost to go into the development of that project are also um, quite large. And that's basically, if they can't deliver a product for as, uh, for as cheap as possible, they have to make it up by charging rents high enough to, to make that product work, whether or not it's market or affordable. 
um, that's you know that's a, uh, a huge constraint because right now with the affordable housing initiative a lot of developers are out there looking for property and affordable property that they can build development projects on but the hard part is finding that property and then going through the the um, development approvals to make that property work we're dealing with a really complex issue here in terms of that's in <laughs> terms of housing development because the, there's so many competing issues, w important issues. I know taxes are, are imposed for, for important reasons, for paying for the schools, for paying for the municipal services. Uh, we also have the environmental issues. So when we have a lengthy approval process, which adds cost to overall development, there are many people that feel that in, in the environment, as I would, is as important as, 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 as affordable mm -hmm. housing. And so being able to really figure out the solution is difficult, challenging, let's use the word challenging. And I, it, it's not just the affordable housing advocates figuring it out, it's not just the municipal officials, we need it all to work together to see how we can um, create the housing. I, I don't think there's anyone that would not say there's such a need for affordable housing, whether it's in Putnam or in, or in Westchester County. We hear it from everywhere. You know, you bring up a very important point, and it goes back to how we named this program, United We Thrive. Mm -hmm. And it really does take a number of different entities to sit down to try and solve a problem. There's a role for business. There's a role for banks. There's a role for the environment. As you mentioned, the sewers, you know, I, I'll bet most of our viewers are not thinking, gee, you know, the housing is so expensive. If only we had more sewers, maybe we'd be able to have some more housing that's affordable. Uh, I don't think people are thinking that way as they're as they're as they're talking about the problem. So it's bringing in business. It's bringing in uh, environmental. It's bringing in the not-for-profit community, and that's one of the things that United Way does: is that we try and bring the entities together to solve problems and to work together on them. And we all have different roles. We all have different strengths. We're not in competition with each other. Um, I know we all work very closely together. I think you would agree uh, to try and make it a better community for everyone to live in and everyone to thrive in. Um, but it is difficult. They are complex problems. And if you could just um, maybe tell something about a, a story about someone that you may have reached or how your your particular organization has reached someone or who has done something that really is making the problem just a little bit better for that person or group. I, I can talk about something that happened yesterday which ex excites me. Um, um, we, we were able to assist a single parent who has a special needs child um, locate uh, affordable housing um, uh, after having lived in a transitional housing development because she couldn't find permanent housing uh, for two years. Mm -hmm. And so she has been moving to different transitional housing and now she, as of uh, yesterday, now has a permanent home in, in White Plains uh, at an rent that she can afford. She's being charged 30 percent of her income the nonprofit that developed it is providing some subsidy, and then another uh, rental assistance program from the emergency shelter program is making up the difference, so that the nonprofit developer can afford to operate it. Uh, but what's the exciting part is is a is a single parent who's of who's employed has found housing after two years that she can afford. That's fantastic. Yeah. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You know, you you mentioned the emergency food and shelter program. Uh, that's something that's administered by the United Way in conjunction with a number of other organizations. And for the past two years, we've been zeroed out of that funding. Uh, and it's, it's actually coordinated through Homeland Security, if you can believe that. Mm -hmm. But it's because the unemployment rate has gone down very slightly and the poverty rate has also gone, gone down very slightly. But if you look back to the information on Alice, which is available on our website if you want to read the full report, um, you'll see that we have real needs here. And again, when you compare it against the rest of the country, 
Uh, it looks like we don't have the needs when you're looking at things like un unemployment or poverty. But, you know, I don't know how many families can exist on, at the federal poverty level here of 24,000. So it, it is a real problem. So does anybody have any final words? Yeah, and, and Alana, I just want to um, uh, jump on what, what Rose was saying about the success, the success stories. And hopefully, you know, we, we, we work with, with Connie and Rose all the time and, and are trying to work together on the communication. And um, we would do as many referrals as they possibly can, can manufacture for us. But with the communication part of it, I think that's huge because PCSB Bank, as well as all the other banks in the community, all have first-time home buyers programs and affordable home uh, programs. The difference there is on the affordable home programs, the banks have an added grant or incentive that they can add to the grants that um, the applicant or the borrower is possibly getting from, um, uh, from Rose or from Connie. Uh, but in addition to that, the banks will kick in. So the communication, the education that those programs are out there is, is, is very important. On the first-time home buyers, the buyers need at least 10 months or, or 12 months to bring up match savings that can be then matched in a, in, in a form you know, of grants. This is such an important topic that we're going to actually do a second show on it and we'll continue on. So I'm looking forward to hearing more and I know our visitors will be looking forward to the next show of United to Thrive, which will continue to focus on this very, very important housing issue and how we as a community can work together. Again, I urge you to give, advocate, volunteer, and help make our community a better, stronger place to live. We know that we've got a great community, both in Westchester and in Putnam, and you all can contribute to it, and we all support each other to do so. So stay tuned for the next United to Thrive and hear more about the housing issue and the Alice population. Thank you so much. And you can go to our website, www.uwwp.org, for more information. And don't forget to call 211 if you have any questions or about any health and human service resource. And tell your friends we're there to help you 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Thank you for watching, and we look forward to seeing you again.